In China, this electric car is priced at less than half the price of a Tesla Model Y. Yeah, I mean, sounds like a great deal, and actually it is in China. Outside of China, this is going to get a bigger battery, an 88 kilowatt hour lithium ion phosphate battery from BYD, but it will be a fair bit more expensive than what it costs in China. I reported on this car around four months ago when it was spotted driving in Australia. The Hyundai or Hyundai Elixio is coming. We officially know the details, the specifications, the range. We've got a pretty good idea on pricing too, and it might maybe disappoint you a little bit. At least the internet is not happy with Hyundai. Even though the pricing hasn't officially been revealed, it seems like the world thinks Hyundai are charging too much for their electric cars. I've been reading comments today on this car, and people seem to think that um, Hyundai's EV strategy is not going to work in the long term because the Chinese are making cars that are better at lower prices. Don't know if you guys agree with that, but let's have a look at these details and see if that's accurate here. YouTube's new algorithm means that you're often not getting all of our videos in your feed. There's 7,500. I'm pretty sure you're probably not seeing a lot of them. In the description, there is a link to our newsletter. Click on that and you can get an update every day of all the latest news in the electric car industry. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Guys, it's great to have you with us. This car, I actually don't mind it. I think it's pretty good. And in a lot of ways, I prefer this over some EVs currently on the market. I do think, based on the estimated pricing, it's going to be too expensive. But you never know. Maybe it's going to surprise us. How big is this car? It's pretty much exactly the same size as a Kia, a Kia EV5. So there you go. It's a Kia EV5. But it's not actually a Kia EV5. It's, it's quite different, in fact. Anyhow, this will be built in China. So sorry, guys, in the US, you guys won't be getting this car, but it will be going to many markets around the world, including Australia. It's going to be built by Beijing Hyundai or Beijing Hyundai. The Hyundai Elixio midsize electric SUV is going to sit between the Kona Electric and the Hyundai Ioniq 5. So that'll be the hierarchy. It'll be the Kona Electric, then the Elixio, and then the Ionic 5. Pricing, though, is an issue here because the price currently of the Kona Electric in Australia, at least, is $54,000. It's cheaper than that in the US, but it's $54,000 Australian dollars. So that's about $30,000 US dollars. The price of the Ionic 5 is around about $70,000. So for this to be, you know, say, sit between those two models, this would have to be 60,000 Australian dollars, meaning it's going to be competing with the XPeng G6, the Zika 7X, the Tesla Model Y. All three of those cars are better specified than this car. But anyway, let's have a look at the other details first, before I'm getting ahead of myself here, maybe. According to a confidential dealer bulletin, um, this car is actually being produced currently and it can be ordered um, within a few weeks. You can actually buy these in China already. In China, it starts at 16,500 US dollars. That's for the shorter range version. But the longer range version in China is about 20,000 US dollars or about 30,000 Australian dollars. So it sounds like they're gonna double the price for Australia. I'm not, I'm not cool with that. But anyway, per the dealer bulletin, this new EV will have 160 kilowatt and 310 newton meters of torque. It's front wheel drive. But the good news is it has an 88 kilowatt hour lithium ion phosphate battery. That battery is going to provide 546 kilometers of range WLTP, which is 340 miles. Yeah, that's pretty good range. Now, there is a smaller battery available in China, but that won't be coming to international markets. The length is 4,615 millimeters, which is which is 181.7 inches. It's 1,875 millimeters wide, just 73.8 inches. So actually this car is the same size pretty much as a Geely X5 or a Kia EV5 or 
a little bit bigger than a BYD Atto 3. And it's actually pretty much the same size as the Aeon V, which is going to be priced at around $45,000, a fair bit cheaper than this will be. So it has to compete with quite a few rivals, which are cheaper and specified pretty well as well. Now in China, this vehicle is called the Hyundai or the Hyundai EO. And it's launched with a pretty wide range of options. The starting price compares with a BYD Auto 3 in China. It's 16,800 US dollars, which is 25,000 Australian dollars. And for that money, you're getting the smaller battery, which is a 64 kilowatt hour battery, which has 540 kilometers of CLTC range, probably about 430 kilometers of range. However, for only a few thousand dollars more, around 20,000 US dollars, you can get the long range version that you can see right here. Chinese buyers will also have the option of getting this vehicle in all wheel drive, which comes with 233 kilowatt. And obviously it's quite a bit faster than this car. The Elixio will have a pretty large 27 inch infotainment display in the center of the dashboard and apparently 29 different storage compartments, including a sliding privacy box. Depending on the version, the new SUV is offered in China with an eight speaker Bose sound system, a panoramic sunroof, dual wireless phone chargers, hands-free power tailgate, heated steering wheel, heated seats, ventilated and power adjustable front seats, and there's some pretty good safety and driver assistance technology available, including lane centering, navigation-based adaptive cruise control, and Hyundai's blind spot view monitor, plus a surround view camera with a transparent chassis mode. The suite of tech is powered by up to five cameras, one millimeter wave radar, and 12 ultrasonic sensors. It's certainly not uh, considered a te technological car in China. This is not, you know, in China there's a lot of cars and they have 12 cameras and have many different radars and LiDAR and all that. This is not that kind of car. It's not going after that kind of market. Anyway, this will be the first EV from Hyundai to be built in China and sold outside of China. And this will allow them to avoid the heavy tariffs that they get on Ionic models imported from South Korea into China. So, you know, there's some pretty big tariffs on EVs that are made in South Korea, in China. And the truth is, realistically, Hyundai is kind of a, in some degree, a dead brand in China. They don't really sell many cars there. So they're hoping that this will kind of revive the brand a little bit. And I think it will, at this price, I think it could sell in China for sure. So these are all this, the, the details we know so far. I thought I'd share with you guys some of the responses to this car. And some of the responses that I'm talking about that have been kind of echoed by the internet, someone said, um, thanks, but no thanks. We will just buy a Chinese brand without any middleman markup. So they're basically saying this is a not really a real Hyundai car. It's a Chinese brand car from Beijing Hyundai, which is a joint venture between Beijing and Hyundai. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they've got a point there. And I think it's a pretty valid point because... For example, the XPeng G6, it's currently $57,000 for the long range with an 87 kilowatt hour battery. It's got 570 kilometers of range. It's got 300 kilowatt charging speed. It's much more technologically advanced than this car. It's much bigger than this car. It's basically better in every single way than this car. And it's going to be cheaper than this car. And you can get one now. So that's an option. That's certainly an option. Obviously, the Zika 7X, you could say similar things about that car too. And you can even say that about the Tesla Model Y, really. A lot of people are saying they think it's really ugly. I actually don't mind the looks. I mean, it's not a car that I'd personally buy, but I think it doesn't look too bad. What do you guys think about the looks? They're saying, uh, here's, a, here's a comment, this really smacks of a cheaply built EV aimed solely to help Hyundai, Hyundai achieve a price point in Australia, but at the expense of quality. Probably why they don't want to apply Ionic naming to the car. I'll be surprised if this car is actually any good. So quite a few people like that comment. I'll wait for the review, but it's going to need to be cheap or it'll have no chance, said a response to that comment. Sure is ugly too, fugly, but that's subjective. So yeah, I agree that it looks subjective for sure.
Some other people said, they've commented and said the interior is a really bad color, snow white. And it is very white on the inside. I've got to agree. I don't know how anyone except maybe an 80 year old could keep this car clean. Um, you'd have to just never use the inside, have anyone else sitting on the inside. I, I've got to agree. I mean, I'm going to guess there'll be a black version as well, but having a brilliant white interior does seem a bit crazy. So to be honest, a lot of people do seem a little bit disillusioned by Hyundai's EV pricing. They think they're too expensive. Um, this doesn't really go for the United States because in the US, you guys don't have access to all these different Chinese cars that the rest of the world can get. But I've got to agree with that. I think Hyundai's EV pricing globally outside of North America is too expensive. And I think they're going to struggle with their EV sales over the next few years unless they can bring in bring their cars in at a more competitive price. That said, we don't know the price of this yet. So we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves. Maybe they'll, um, I don't know, reduce the price of their other EVs and be able to reduce the price of this car to kind of reposition everything. But it does appear that that's probably not going to happen. This is probably going to be about $60,000, probably going to compete on price with a Model Y a G6, XP G6, and a Zika 7X. And it, on, that, on that level, it's just not at the level of those cars. Thanks for watching.